a spell on you. Police say, tell your kids not to eat anything until they get home and the candy is inspected. Need to look out for tonight so your Halloween is a treat and you not a trick. Stop the things you do. And says the number of Halloween tampering cases is very small. I put a spell on Hold on. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to our second ever episode of our true crime podcast, Crime Yak. Woo. I'm your host, Erin. I'm your co host, Anna. So you can see. Woo! <laughs> and it's homecoming. It's homecoming Yay. today. Woo. Yeah, this is my overalls. So you can't <laughs> see them. This week's episode is Halloween themed, which I cannot be more excited for because it's my favorite holiday personally. Mm. Just because it's so spooky and folly and stuff. <laughs> Still don't have a costume. You don't have a costume still? <laughs> no, I need ideas. I got my costume and it was too big, so I'm just gonna free for all and oh. be a skeleton. I love that though. Oh, I'm oh, hoping that after today I'll like be inspired or something. Yeah. Be, like a Candyman themed. Do I'll be a bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm super excited because Aaron is gonna be telling me a bunch of mini short Halloween stories. I'm yes. I'm gonna be the... jumping all over the place. Excited. I'm excited for the like short form horror story aspect. Yes. Okay, so a lot of stories are about like razor blades and you know like right. and apples and all of that, the, the myths yeah. or whatever. Still such a big fear. I know. Mm. So it's actually more of an herbal legend, but um, one of the first stories that the guy was named the first ever like candy man yeah. in this story, mm. it's, it was in uh, 1984. Okay. And so eight-year-old Timothy O'Brien had a packet of Pixie sticks given to him by oh, his gosh. father, oh, no. Ronald, to cap off his trick-or-treating. Oh. So at the end of his trick-or-treating, his dad gave him a pixie stick. He perished less than an hour later. Um, so it sent the small town in Texas into a panic. In Texas? Mm -hmm. I need oh, to no. actually look up where it, where it was, but I, I don't know. And then the police determined that the pixie stick that Timothy ate was laced with cyanide. Yeah. Oh my, Ronald. Yeah, so when <laughs> Ronald's story kept changing, police began to investigate him, and they found him to be deeply in debt, and he'd taken out a massive life insurance policies on his children. That is so sick. Yeah, so police Who found the other children that? had also been given candy by Ronald, but none of them ate it. Uh, this um, Timothy was the only one. That's so scary. Like, I think, honestly, the scariest aspect of Halloween, like, it's the same thing with people, like, spiking people's drinks or, like, yeah. putting things in candy. It's just you're not expecting it. Yeah, okay, so here's another story that I found. So, oh so in 1974, the suburban Houston dad passed out poisonous pixie sticks to five children, including his son and daughter, in order to kill his kids and collect... This is a different man? Yes, this is different. And this is in Houston. Why? I'm like, what's what, up with Texas? Texas people Texas in pixie dads. sticks? If anybody lives in Texas, only get pixie sticks from Bucky's. That yeah. is like. It's not even that much money. Like, he literally killed his two kids for $40,000. Like, $40,000. That's it. Well, it's like, how much, how little do your kids mean to you at that point if you're willing to do that? For uh, $40,000. I don't know. That's but. So, like, if it was like a Squid Game scenario and you can win, like, a bunch okay. of millions of dollars. No, Anna, I'm just no, kidding. No, I'm just, no. His son died, but police collected all the other pixie sticks before they got uh, to the other okay. kids. So That's only good. his son died. That's but good. it was only for $40,000. Anyways, he was crazy. dubbed another candy man, and then he was put to death in 1984, which Okay, good. so you know what's, like, interesting is... So I told you about the movie Candyman, because mm -hmm. we just went and saw it a couple weeks ago, like yeah. the reboot. I'm wondering... Because the original movie was like 80s, 90s. Now I'm wondering if it was actually based off of this. Because I know the story of the Candyman centers around, it's more more about economic classes and different races because there's it's like a history of black men being, being mistreated and becoming the Candyman. But like the idea and the concept of putting razors in candy or like mm -hmm. putting harmful things in candy and then calling them the Candyman is like a big aspect of the movie, so yeah. I'm wondering if that had to do with it. Well, let's look really it up, cool. shall we? 
It's based on 1978, 1980s, oh. so like 70s, 80s, which is mm -hmm. the, the most time that it was happening because my dad grew up in yeah. Dallas in the 70s and mm -hmm. 80s. He was in high school in the 80s, but anyways, his mom, like, oh, he could not eat any candy until he got home, emptied it out, but that was also because it was the time period. Right. It was Texas, <laughs> or t it was happening in Texas, which is just creepy. No, that's more than reasonable. But you yeah, a different... On to the next. Topic. Okay, this one makes me, like, shiver. Oh it's, gosh. like, it's really sad. It's, like, effed up that I'm excited. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name. Okay. okay. Yoshiro Hattori. Oh, is he Japanese? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, does this, I don't know if, if that's... It's good enough. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, here he is. Just take a look at him, okay? Aww. Yeah, sweet, nice innocent Asian boy. boy. My mom would want me to marry him. See, exactly. Very <laughs> sweet, cute, 1990s, so it's mm -hmm. fun with all the fashion. Yeah. <laughs> so he was a Japanese exchange student living in Baton Rouge as a part of the American Field Service Program. Japanese exchange student living in the South doesn't sound like this is going to go yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> On Halloween night, 1992, Hattori and the young son of his host family went to a Halloween party for AFS students, which I'm pretty sure is like for foreign, foreign exchange, exchange yeah. students, yes. Unfamiliar with the neighborhood um, where the party was, the boys rang the doorbell of the wrong house. When they got no answer, they started walking back to the car the owner of the home, Ronnie Perez, then opened the door, armed with a .44 Magnum, which I'm not very good with guns, but Hattori turned around and said, we're here for the party, claiming he feared for his life and that the exchange student was scary. He shot Hattori, ending his mm -hmm. life, um, only when both the governor of Louisiana and the Japanese consultant got involved was Pierce arrested, after which he was accused of manslaughter. Oh my but god. Isn't that like so sad? Like imagine like a foreign exchange student saying, like, we're here for the party, yeah. like all sweet and excited to go to an American Halloween party. Because so Halloween's sad. not like that much of a thing in other countries, right. I believe. But that is really, really, really sad. And we were talking so the sad. other day about like trespassing laws. Yeah, yeah, that's what this So my was. dad told me, I okay. got a little bit clarity on it. Okay. Okay, so if you have like a walkway up to your front door, like mm -hmm. a sidewalk, that's allowing people on your property. So unless you have a uh. sign that says no trespassing, because I was like, do these laws apply during Halloween? Like, yeah. Like, and he said, yes, they do, because if you have a sign that says no trespassing, then no, you can't. Even if they have a sidewalk or okay. something like a grand op like an opening to their right, front door. Right. But if they have nothing to their front door, then then no. So I'm guessing obviously he thinks he got charged with manslaughter. If right. He right. Didn't then. But yeah. also, um, I would like to <laughs> like to make a point here that so far both of the murderers have been named Ronnie or Ronald. <laughs> I think that this is creating a trend. Dude, it probably is. I'm gonna go as Ronald McDonald for Halloween. <laughs> Don't. Okay. <laughs> You're representing the wrong people here. Uh, buddy that names their child Ronald, unless it's Ron from Harry Potter. That's true. I do like Ron. Okay, here is a story of from 2010. A Halloween teenager, Devon Griffin, returned from his Sunday church service to mm -hmm. find his brother Derek, mother Susan, Susan's new husband William, murdered. Oh. Devon was so traumatized that he could only say that the scene was something, quote, something out of a haunted house. Oh my gosh. Um, they found William's son from the previous marriage to be um, the one who Holy killed all of them because he wow. had a history of, like, aggression. Anyways, he, so was, he was later picked up and then he pleaded guilty to all three murders. So he just showed up at their house? Yep, and, and then he why, took his own life in prison in 2015. Why was, who was, Devon was the one alive? Devon, yeah. Was why was he the only one at church? I don't know. <laughs> I feel point, like all of these probably. true crimes are scarier than any horror movie or urban legend, because it's just knowing that people are capable of that. Oh, is, yeah. Okay, um, so have you heard of the smiley face murders? 
I believe I have, but elaborate. Okay. Well, I did explain it in our class earlier, like a couple days ago, so I okay. hope you didn't hear. But okay. um, Is that the one where you made me cover my ears and maybe sing a song? I Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That was actually the one with the $40,000 one. Oh, was, okay, okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> Smiley Face Murders. So they were like along, I'm pretty sure, never northeast section of the United States, but I'm pretty sure a couple happened like all over the place and no one knows if they were like copycat murders or whatever. And honestly, I haven't looked it up in a while, so it could be solved, but I don't think it is. Hopefully because not in Texas. No, no, it's not. It's, Finally. It's somewhere somewhere else, but nice. it would be towards um, college students, but male college students. And that's why oh, it's so like something that sticks out mm -hmm. of the ordinary because male college students, that's not an, an obvious target, obviously. Yeah, I think that most murderers would be going for w women or younger people that it's that's like easier to mm -hmm. overtake. Yeah, so and then they would pray, um, spray paint smiley faces next to like or near the uh, area of the crime No, scene. I actually haven't heard of this. Yeah, so that's why it's called smiley face murders. And there's a series of different crimes that were unsolved that people thought were a part of the smiley face murders because there's smiley faces near where their body was found or something. Yes. But smiley faces are also pretty common with spray painting, like yeah. just something to. Do, 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 do. That would be me, the only yeah. thing I can do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that's why a lot of them are misconceptions, but mm. I, I don't think that, nah, they're all mysterious, and I don't know if oh they're copycat gosh. or not either. That's crazy. Anyways, Chris Jenkins was a 21-year-old student at the University of Minnesota who was last seen leaving downtown Minneapolis, um, a Minneapolis bar on Halloween night of 2002. Four months later, his body was discovered in the Mississippi ri River, still wearing his Halloween costume. Since he was intoxicated that, intoxicated that night, he appeared to have drowned. Authorities initially believed that um, he was, it was either an accident or self-inflicted, but his parents refused to believe this and pressed for more of an investigation. Mm -hmm. In 2002, the death was reclassified as a homicide. Police claimed that um, suspect told him that he, he was present when Chris was slain and thrown off of a bridge into the river. Jeez. While the story is credible, there's never been enough evidence to like file charges or anything. Um, and people claim that he could have been a victim in the unclaimed and mysterious smiley face murders. Hmm. Interesting. And so, yeah, so these bizarre killings have approximately 40 male, have killed a approximately 40 male college students in the 40? United States. Yeah, Jeez. who have all drowned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so. Wait, but did they find any actual like bodily markings on him or are they saying they threw him off the bridge and that's, and the impact? Yeah, like and I guess he was intoxicated. So like, oh, I mean, right. if you were drunk and thrown into a river, that's like flushing and yeah. flushing and you're also like it was off of a tall bridge I mean I don't think that you would survive right maybe that was their goal Jeez. but it obviously like there wasn't a thorough investigation at first and like by the time they found his body which was five months after and then they could have done like a later optop um, autopsy mm -hmm. autopsy 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 yeah <laughs> but they didn't because at first they claimed it as like either self-inflicted or whatever but why is this related to the smiley face murders? They believe that it could be because there's the smiley faces, there was this, like a smiley face found on the bridge, right? Uh. And then that the other suspect, uh, not suspect, the other civilian came up and said they were present during the killing. So anyways, because, huh. because smiley face murders, the victim yeah. had drowned mm -hmm. and they were college students. Right. And this guy was attending college, 21 year old, yeah. and he drowned and it was right. in Minnesota. So kind so of near kind the of area. Yeah. So they just believe. But I mean, so obviously nothing's claimed and nothing yeah. was found out about it. That's so interesting. So this is another college kid one. Penn State grad Cindy State. Song disappeared after leaving a party on Halloween in 2001. She'd been dropped off at her apartment, had gone inside, but nobody saw her after that and no trace of her was ever found. The case was taken to a number of bizarre twists and for a while the inv investigation focused on a man named Hugo Marcus Skolinski, Skolinski, Skolinski had been arrested after four corpses were found in his backyard. Oh. Yep. So after five corpses were found in his backyard, police were informed that to get 
Cindy, there had been two men who kidnapped her. And then they found his body with the other bodies found in this guy's backyard. So you think it was double crossing, double agent secrets? Yeah, but that's just like sad. You really need two, two men to pull this little college girl. Yeah. Anyways, that's his house, which already looks super uh, Halloween-y no. and creepy <laughs> and gross. Ew. I'm like, ew. <laughs> but that also is really sad that she got raped by two men. It's even worse by one, but come on, two? Well, you don't know if it was the second because he killed him. Oh, that is true. I guess we don't know what happened, but two to allegedly took him. Helen, how do you say this? Hmm. P. Phil. File, fail, I don't know. Last name, it's really, we don't know. Helen. Feel? Anyways, she caused a national panic over Halloween candy in 1964. So this is another one of those early, before the 70s and 80s stories that happened in the United States that made people start fearing Mm -hmm. more. Anyways, she was a bored housewife and tired of kids. She thought they were too old to be trick-or-treating. Uh, so she started handing out poisonous candy, skulls and crossbones. As you do. Because they were trick-or-treating and they were too old for it, apparently. Okay, I have a problem with this. You can't judge people for their ages for trick-or-treating. Last year, I was handing out candy to kids, and this one, I think he was at least 18. This 18-year-old man in a chicken costume came by my door (laughs) three different times, and I gave him candy each time. Three times? Yes, and I didn't poison his candy, Helen. So if I I have to do that, then you... All right, and we are back. A little... A little uh, bit later, I'm drinking a candy apple energy drink to mm. more fall mood. I covered up the brand name. I don't Why? think that matters. Oh, that's okay. Oh, good. Don't good want to risk anything. You know? Yeah, we had a little technical difficulty with the SD card, ran out of space, and then we had other classes to it's attend fine. to. We're back. We're good. And now we're just gonna do some quick, like I think it's early it's 20th like century. Part. 20, no, early 21st century, early okay. 20th century. A little quick stuff from mm-hmm. history.org. Mm. So, why witches fly on brooms? Mm. The earliest known image of witches on brooms dates back to 1451, Whoa. when two illustrations appeared on the French poet Martin Lee France's manuscript. The association between witches and brooms may have roots in... Um, fertility rituals in, in which rural farmers would leap and dance with poles, pitchforks, or brooms in the light of the new full moon to encourage the growth of their crops. Huh. Yeah, so the broomstick dance became confused with the common accounts of witches flying around through the night on their oh. way. So it went from farmers to witches. Mm-hmm, which is kind of interesting because I feel like farmers yeah. are the ones that like burnt down witches. Yeah. Well, how did the witches turn into having green skin? Because I feel like like the crucible kind of witches were yeah. just normal, normal girls that they accused of worshiping Satan and being witches and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they didn't. There's not the stigma of the brooms and the green skin and all that and those types of witches. Well, I'm not a history buff. I don't. We know are that. gonna do a witchcraft episode, and in that case, I will research more of like. Ooh. The traditions and like how they escalated to like what we see as witches now, but it doesn't say anything about that in here. That it just was talks good. about the brand. That was good promotion. Oh yeah, yeah, promotion. Subscribe. <laughs> Probably the next episode. <laughs> I don't know. Um, why haunted houses opened during the Great Depression? Oh. That is okay. So in the period leading up to the Great Depression, Halloween became more of a time when young men would blow off steam and cause like mischief. It's like the purge. I guess. <laughs> because like, you know, in the Great Depression, like all mm-hmm. people had to do was like go to like, it was like the movie theaters, but it was just yeah. a barn with like them playing a showing and like right. families would just sit there for hours, like right. for entertainment, because they have nothing else to do and they have no money. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe this is why. But sometimes they went too far. In 1933, parents were outraged when hundreds of teenage boys flipped over cars, oh. sawed off telephone poles, and engaged in other acts of vandalism across the country. Juvenile delinquents, mm-hmm. their people, devious licks. <laughs> <laughs> people began to refer to that year um, as the Black Halloween, similar to the way they referred to the stock market crash four years earlier as Black Tuesday. Oh. Rather than banning the holiday, as some demanded, some communities began organizing Halloween activities, the haunted houses. Because people 
are obnoxious. Yes, so to tame their <laughs> them being obnoxious and give them something to do, I guess. Hmm. And then it escalated into like McCamey Manor. Yeah, and, like probably. all of those ridiculous ones where you have to sign a waiver. I've worked at more haunted houses than I've mm. been to them. I've only been to one. I've worked at like three. I want to work it's, at a haunted house. No, it sucks. Never mind, never I don't. To. Like, I don't know about you. I'm very skeptical when it comes to paranormal things. Really? Like, I I think I sort of believe them. I allow myself to get scared by the idea of ghosts and supernatural things existing, but I don't fully believe it. I yeah. Think. When I was little, I was like, I thought I was a ghost for like... You thought you were a ghost? Yes, for like years. Like, I thought I was a ghost. Yeah. It was crazy. I like thought I like actually believed I was a ghost. Like that people couldn't see you. No. Wow. All those accounts of children doing super creepy things or like recalling past lives and past people. Uh, kids have huge imaginations. Like that's fair. That's so fair. like so much creativity, which gets smashed by school, which makes me sad. Mm -hmm. Maybe people just mistake that. I don't know. I mean, I think that spirits are like around, but. I don't believe in like vampires. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I don't believe in that. I wish witchcraft was a thing. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I feel like all those TikTok witches and doing Okay, that those stuff tricks. is just so dumb. Like when I, I see them like drop the rock from their hand, I'm like, <laughs> really? Really? Like, oh, yeah. very <laughs> Okay, this is why Mary Shelley carried her dead husband's heart. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein? Right? So, Frankenstein author, yes. Mary. Oh. Mary Shelley is world renowned for her terrifying fiction, but few knew that she had a dark secret of her own. Her oh, husband, God. Percy, drowned at the age of 29. Oh, Percy. And his boat caught <laughs> in a storm in July of 1822. His body and those of his fellow sailors were found 10 days later. Percy and the others were cremated, but Shelley's heart did not burn, perhaps due to the, um, whatever, okay. What? His heart didn't burn. Mary creepy. Shelley eventually took ownership of her late husband's heart instead of to have carried around in a silk bag. So she like carried around her dead husband's heart in a, in a silk Ew. bag. Sorry, Mary. But that is pretty cool that his that his heart didn't. Yeah, that's really weird. But at the same time, I think that her... oh tuberculosis early in his life that's what made him not his heart not burn. How does that work? I don't know. I don't know a lot about tuberculosis. Me either. This is why I'm not a doctor. I am going into musical theater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smart one here. But I don't, it seems like something that would be on an episode of My Strange Addiction. Probably. Oh, that's <laughs> like true. That like that person that ate, ate their, their mother's <laughs> ashes. Oh my gosh. The same thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, that episode. Uh. Throughout this episode, I'm still. Oh, 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 I had an idea for a costume and I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I forgot. I don't you don't remember. know what you're going to be. I don't know. I did read somewhere that there, there was some sort of report and it was like a number of black cats. Like, they, people won't adopt them. People will kill black cats. That's just sad. Just because of the stigma. I feel bad. Oh. Poor black cats. <laughs> We're wrapping up. And I want to go eat lunch. Yes, everybody say goodbye to forever Jack. to Jack because he's really stinky. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm sorry, buddy. <clears throat> Beedy. Bye. It's been a murder. Mm -hmm. I can't stand it. You've been.